Welcome career homemakers, where we aim to make our career goal-oriented, creative, and satisfying. In this episode, we are going to talk about marriage. Now, this is kind of a repeat episode because I am learning a new platform for those in the podcasting world. Uh, Spotify has now changed their recording to Riverside, and I'm learning their platform, their recording platform. So it's taking me some time. I know last episode that I did was really scratchy, not edited as well as I would have have liked it to be edited. Uh, So I'm taking that off and I published another one too. And the first 30 seconds were, uh, you couldn't hear them. So I I took that down too. So Anyways, we're going to try this again. So these next three podcasts are going to be on marriage. And I've been married for 33 years now. And it's had its challenges and its good times. And I'm just so thankful that the same man loves me. And often even puts up with me sometimes. Uh, But for the most part, we're, we do just fine and we're happy together. Uh, One of the things is we've closed that back door out of the relationship called divorce. We're committed to each other. And so it helped us through those rough patches to really work on what was wrong because there wasn't an alternative. We had to. I think that was better for us. It made things better for us. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and read my script. (laughs) Couples marry, they combine their aspirations abilities, surroundings, and resources to create a unique lifestyle. The bond between a husband and a wife is special. He is a one you chose to spend the rest of your life with, your friend and lover. Couples realize that their loving relationship is also a working relationship. They work together on mutual interests, goals, and challenges. This relationship is a partnership because of their oath or vows at the beginning of their marriage. Marriage vows said during your ceremony carry weight because it was declared before God and witnesses. Do you remember your marriage vows? If you and your husband wrote your own, take time to review them so you remember what you vowed. Here's a look at traditional vows said during a wedding ceremony. The vows in the name of God, I take you to be my wife or my husband to have and hold From this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until parted by death. This is my solemn vow. So let's pick that part a a little bit, line by line. To have and to hold from this day forward. Mates fend off temptation when they are together in the same home and the same bed. Temptations arise when couples aren't having and holding each other. Doing life together is good glue that keeps couples together. There can be times apart, travel, and business trips 
that keep partners away, but do your best as a couple to have and to hold each other for better or for worse. If you've been married one week, you've experienced for better or for worse moments. There are many stressors, even on the honeymoon, and it continues through life. Life is not a straight line. It's more like a roller coaster. So get ready to experience life's better and worse moments together. Our vows remind wives to take, have, and hold him when moments, days, or years get tough for rich or for poor. Couples go through many financial stages in their married lives. Some years they may be more prosperous than others. Couples must learn to navigate those fluctuations in finances, in sickness, and in health. Many times life takes a downturn. Spouses can come to the quick aid and rescue of their partner. They are right there. Spouses see and know our everyday behavior and can tell when things are digressing. If either one is struggling with health issues, they must be brave enough to talk with the one who has vowed to love them in sickness and health until death do part. Occasionally, we must swallow our pride and let our busy husbands know when we aren't doing well. You may discover that they have been waiting for us to say something. So remember to communicate when you aren't doing well or need help. To love and to cherish until parted by death. To cherish means to treasure, to hold or treat something as dear. And love is an intense, deep affection for one person. Married couples choose to treasure their mate for better or for worse, richer or poorer, and in sickness and in health. In his wisdom, God knew that doing life with someone you love is better than doing it alone. And the man you said, Vows to is meant to be your your closest relationship. So treat it that way. Give preference to your husband over other people and interests to allow room for your marriage relationship. In the Bible, in, in Ecclesiastes 4, it says, Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better. For a triple braided cord is not easily broken. And that third person is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the third person in your marriage. And with him, with you and your husband, that is a very, very strong bond. Staying together. The biggest reason for divorce are lack of commitment, financial challenges, and infidelity. Those are the big threes. I'm going to say it again because it's important. Lack of commitment, financial challenges, and infidelity. Remember your vows during times of crisis. People don't think about their words of commitment when things are going well. It's when things get tough that you have to stand fast to the vows you made on your wedding day. Wives initiate 70% of divorces. 
Sadly, 20% of these are because of domestic violence. I implore you to seek counsel if you have experienced abuse or are afraid of your husband who may hurt you or your children. So that leaves 50% of divorces initiated by women could be averted. Divorce may have been normal in your family, but for the sake of your marriage, your children, and even your grandchildren, choose wisely and defeat these three big reasons for breakups. Defeat lack of commitment with faithfulness and good communication. Then meet financial challenges by planning ahead. Being patient with your husband as he builds his career and using wisdom when buying your first home. Keep close to your husband intimately by taking care of any physical or emotional pain issues with professional care. Don't let lack of attention or commitment steal your marriage. Let's talk about each. Be faithful. Marriage is a three-way partnership, God, husband, and wife. Remember the verse above from Ecclesiastes that said, three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. One or two strands could be broken, but three together become very strong. Marriages are stronger with God. Prayer and submitting to God strengthen the cord that holds your marriage together. Then keep close to your husband. Respect and please him by doing what he cares for, and he will love you back. Treat him like a child, and he'll either resent you or become like one of the kids. Be committed to letting each other have space to grow and think. Give your husband room to grow and explore. Otherwise, he will feel trapped. If you are too demanding or smother him, you don't want to be that kind of wife. Everyone needs time away to hear their own thoughts. This is where your life partner will many times call out to the Lord. Be committed to each other through all stages of life. It is relatively easy to remain faithful when everything's going well. When one partner wants to make a change or take on a new responsibility while the other is perfectly content with the status quo, dissatisfaction can arise. Be committed, faults and weaknesses will show up, but staying faithful to loving your husband, even if you feel he has sinned against you, is a challenge the Bible addresses. In 1 Peter 4, 8, it says, above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. In marriage, thoughtless decisions like spending money on foolish activities or things can be very hurtful, even petty, but irritating things like leaving socks on the floor can seem like an insult. These are just two small examples, but yours might be much more hurtful. Remember this truth, forgiveness and overlooking wrongs show you are committed for better or for worse. Be committed to communicating well. Be clear. No games. Don't leave him guessing. Most husbands aren't very good at guessing, and it's not fun for them, but frustrating. For example, if you like chocolate, tell him and tell him exactly which kind so he knows exactly what will make you smile. Trust me, it works. Suppose it's an important matter you need to talk about. Check his mood, 
by discussing a normal matter. If he's willing to talk about it and give his input, maybe he'll discuss something bigger. But first of all, always be careful. Ask God about the issue first. Submit it to God and ask him for help to resolve the issue and for grace in communicating with your husband. God wants to help, so ask. Be humble while communicating. You've already laid it out before God by praying. So trust God with your husband and his decision. It may need to wait. Your husband may say no or simply get irritated. So you may have to shelve it and trust God for the right timing. It's hard to wait, but it's part of life. We do a lot of waiting. And waiting is for your husband to come on board with something you feel is right for your family. Believe me, I've been there and every Christian woman has. Be approachable by listening and responding well. Couples who communicate well are like a gear. The teeth match up without grinding. Do sparks fly when you and your husband talk? And no, I don't mean the good kind. The kind when you are not aligned. Many times we respond this way because of lack of trust. Previous experiences did go as expected. Another factor is a way your parents handled conflict. You may have grown up with different communication styles. One is more aggressive and loud and argumentative than the other. Neither is good because conflict has a purpose. Pushing us out of complacency and forcing us to make much needed decisions and changes. That is the purpose of conflict. So what we do and how we communicate through and during that conflict, just remember you love him. You vowed to spend the rest of your life with him. He was the man you picked. So remember that when you're having a conflict. I know things changed when I said, I'm on your side. I'm not fighting against you. I'm actually on your side. So let's work through this together. When life pushes your family into needed changes, something has to give. Usually one partner will deal with most of the responsibility because it's part is in his or her set of responsibilities. For example, we know the mom bears most of the weight in an unexpected pregnancy, needing to find a better paying job or a fixer upper house rests on the husband. How you communicate during these life changing moments affects your children as well. Don't just discuss and argue behind closed doors because your children won't learn how to deal with conflict. But an all-out yelling match is a bad example. So think about these points. Ask yourself these questions about how you and your husband communicate. Will you discuss important matters in front of your children? What did your parents do? What is you and your husband's communication style when dealing with conflict? A. Loud and angry. B. Try at all costs to get out of the conflict. C. Never bring up a conflict. D. Pray together and dig discuss calmly. Thank you for listening to Career Homemakers. Hope that this is helpful to you and your marriage. If you have questions you want answered during these podcasts, I will look through them and answer uh, ones that I think will help all of our listeners. 
Um, but you can email me at Kim at careerhomemakers.com. I'll have that in the show notes as well. God sees what you do all week. You are not alone. He is with you and he will help you. Let me pray for your marriage. Dear Lord Jesus, we love you. We are so thankful for our marriages. Please uphold and lift them up and help us to consider are we doing any of these big three that um, could damage our marriage or leave it susceptible? So help me to move away from those things. Help me do those things that build a good and healthy marriage. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a very blessed week.